Hello. Remember me. G'day everyone, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today I'm going to be playing with Monster Clay again, which is a blast to use. And this was actually the sculpture I made the first time I used Monster Clay in a video. And ever since I first used it, there's something I've wanted to do. Make one of those epic character concept sculptures that they have for like movies and games. And after I made this bad boy, I of course had some leftover Monster Clay that I can work with in this video, but I mean, if any of you know me, you know that this just won't cut it. So I took the liberty to just uh, get myself uh, a little bit uh, more. <laughs> as far as what monster I'll be sculpting with all this monster clay, well, I have something pretty cool in mind. This is Galek, one of the starting characters you get to choose from in Raid Shadow Legends, who have sponsored this video. Raid Shadow Legends is a brand new mobile RPG game. It has an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, huge boss fights, and more than 400 champions for you to collect and personally customize as you play. I got sucked into the game immediately. The graphics are just like, I, I honestly have never seen anything like it in a mobile game before. I mean, seriously, just check out the detail on these characters. And you have these custom champion screens where you can add their items and level them up as you go. And map by map and dungeon by dungeon, you face off against epic enemies, build up your skill set, work on your strategies. Eventually, you can unlock PvP and a whole load of awesome stuff. The story and graphics of Raid Shadow Legends are comparable to AAA titles, and it's on your friggin' mobile phone. It's really amazing, and it's free to play now. Click one of my special links in the description. You will instantly get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. For the last few months I wanted to get to doing a Monster Clay video and doing a full character. Some of the characters I was thinking of doing were like the Hulk or something medieval like a barbarian or some sort of epic warrior. But honestly, that's why I've just decided to sculpt Gallic. Sort of got a bit of the Hulk and he's definitely sort of barbarian warrior-ish and it just seemed really fun. I have to do some drawing first. I'm going to start off with thumbnail sketches to see what sort of poses I can come up with and then once I have something I like, I'm going to do a bit of a refined illustration that I can plan a bit of a, an armature and support structure around. In the end, I went with a bit of a power stance pose. I wanted something that felt really solid and looks really epic, but also I need to build my confidence working with this stuff, and especially because I'm working to a large scale, which I haven't done before, and doing a full character, which I also haven't done before, I figure I should keep it mildly vanilla to try and make it as effective as possible. Now, with that said, it's still going to be really hard, especially with things like the axes, because as you can imagine, the clay itself doesn't support itself very well. I'm going to have to build the support structures in the armature to make sure that they're there is enough strength in the shaft of the axe and in the limbs to have the character stand up solidly on his own. And as you can see, there's a lot of mass and what will eventually be weight in the upper body of this dude. I'm not saying he skips leg day. I'm just saying he really doesn't skip arm and chest and shoulders day. <laughs> So this is my sketch, and I am actually going to take this and go to the hardware store because I need to get a few things to make an armature or a, a frame internally that will hold this character up. Now I have some wire and some tin foil, which is really good to build out the mass in the center, which I did for my zombie character that I showed at the start of this video. I'm just showing a bit of footage over the video now so you can see what I mean. But for something big and self-standing, I need a lot more support, specifically around this area, around the center of the body, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna have sort of like like a pole or a bar coming internally. I feel like that might look a bit weird, like there's a pole up his bum. Probably not the epic look I'm going for. <laughs> I'm gonna take my sketch to the hardware store and see what things they have. Because I haven't planned ahead very well and I've never done this before, but I don't like to research and I like to make things up as I go along. I'm sure you like that about this channel too. Right? Right? Whatever, I'm going to the hardware store. Ouch! There's a light there. <laughs>
so here he is. This is my armature. I gotta say, while I had fears about the, the pole straight under looking like it might be shoved up his bum, I don't think this one's any better. <laughs> but at very least, it's stable. Like the glue's dry, it feels like it's gonna have a lot of structural support. I'm hoping that it won't look too proby. And I'm also hoping it sort of fades into the background once all the clay's on, but let's just do it. Let's just ignore that. So I'm about ready to throw some clay on and the way I've approached this is I've separated the ax and the head. And the idea is that I will sculpt these, model them with the clay separate to the character so that I can refine them and then eventually position them how I want. The other thing I'm a little bit worried about is the proportion. So the, the actual character is a really broad, wide fellow. And as you can see, this is a really skinny, lanky armature. And I've tried to allow for a, a broad musculature by widening the shoulders, but I'm really just gonna have to lump the clay on to thicken this big boy out. <laughs> Let's heat this baby up. Let's heat this baby up. That was a lame intro. But I only have one rip. That sort of wastes my... It's all right, I have another one. Let's get lumpy. No, that wasn't... Oh, damn it. Whatever, I'm microwaving it, okay? Okay, so it's a little soft on the top, but it's quite soft on the bottom. So I'm assuming that means it's very melty in the middle, bloop, there it is. Ugh, there's me monster cloud, okay. And as you may have noticed, this is probably gonna end up quite a bit bigger than our zombie friend here. And this did use half of a container of monster clay, and this still has a fill in the middle. So I'm hoping I don't run out. If I can, if I can pull this off, I feel like there's gonna be an awesome payoff. And thus began the process of slumping the sludge onto the armature. I have to say, getting stuck into another monster clay sculpture video has reminded me why I love working with this stuff. When it's heated up, it has the consistency of really thick mashed potato. Seriously, it's amazing to be able to really quickly build up areas of mass on the sculpture. As you go about building up the figure, it starts to naturally get to a place where it feels more like working with plasticine or putty. Once I've built up the figure enough, I start to remove clay. You see, the trick is to build it up to the thickness that feels right for your figure and then to go a little bit further so that in the next stage, once it's hardened a bit more, you can carve away and refine the geometry as you go. By the way, it bears mentioning that I've deviated from my sketch at this point and decided to only do one axe, both for the preservation of clay and of my sanity. <laughs> Working with the clay at its fully hardened consistency feels exactly how it looks, like sculpting chocolate. And using scraping tools almost as if they were peelers, I slowly carve back to create a more detailed anatomy. And yes, doing this is absolutely every bit as satisfying as it looks. Now that I'd refined all the areas of the exposed skin, it was time to move on to the rest of the figure. The armor, cloth, weapons, and the details. This was a much more time-consuming process than I anticipated. I don't know why I didn't realize how long this would take, but my god! Piece by piece I cut, sculpted, and attached pieces of the outfit. Some pieces were attached as warm clay and would adhere without much trouble. Other pieces, like the armor plates, had to mostly be created and hardened away from the body so that they would sit rigidly. And when I was ready to attach them, I used a heat gun on the surfaces that were going to connect so that they would soften and bond. Sometimes I used some hot clay between both surfaces just to ensure a really strong hold. Other areas of the sculpture, such as when I got to the legs, required more of that building up and sculpting back process that I followed with the anatomy and the body. Slapping lumps of warm clay onto the areas that will be shaped into the folds of the pants or into the fur of the boots.
now that all the parts of the outfit were added, I went through and carved in details and creases, as well as added some grit by scratching, scuffing, and really hacking into some areas of the armour. After all, he wouldn't be a true warrior if his armour had never seen some really intense battles, and I really wanted this armour to feel really battle -worn. On and on the detailing went from the furs to the face, the straps to the axe, detail after gruelling detail, until the perfectionist in me could finally be satisfied. so exhausted. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not cutting to the reveal straight away just because I need a debrief. This has taken four days. I scheduled for two to do this, so underestimating as usual. But the fun part is, literally all of my monster clay is used up, so couldn't have planned it to be a closer call. <laughs> but with that said, that was a lot of time lapse to watch and get through, and it's now time for you to hopefully enjoy the reveal of my final sculpture. So after four days of intense sculpture, and not just normal days, I've, I've worked late into the night. This is the result, and I am really happy with it. Oh, look, sands the the pole up the bum thing. Probably not the epic look I'm going for. <laughs> but I'm hoping you guys will overlook that in favor of the fact that I've put a colossal effort into a fairly colossal monster clay sculpture. I really love that it feels like, like a concept character for like a video game or movie or... I mean, that, that's dumb to say, because obviously there's a character from a, a video game, but I'm going for that vibe, you know what I mean? When you start actually refining it and getting to the polishing stages and adding like the armor plates and all that stuff, oh man, it starts to feel really cool to see it all come together so quickly. When I say quickly, it still took days, but you get what I mean. Now it's actually quite hard for me these days to get three or four days to work on one video or one artwork for a video. So if you loved this video, please make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment just so I know what you think of it and let me know what you want to see me do in the future. And of course, share this video. If you guys really love this sort of video, I'm going to do what I can to create more epic pieces like this. And I do want to thank Raid for sponsoring this video. Once again, they didn't ask me to, to do their character. I really just loved the design of their character. And uh, if it weren't for their sponsorship, I wouldn't have been able to afford the time and the resources to make something as ambitious as I have today. So I really appreciate that sponsorship and I want to thank you for watching this video. Now if you're new here, make sure to subscribe to Draw with Jazza for more fun with art and creativity. Sometimes it's sculpture, sometimes it's painting or drawing, and sometimes it's just dumb memes, but we have a lot of fun. And if you did have a lot of fun in this video, there's more videos you can check out over there on the main channel and on the vlog channel behind the scenes, which I made one of this video, where I show the slow descent into madness as this project takes longer and longer to make than I expected. <laughs> Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.